All righty, back at it again. And starting to look at the cowlings. Read some instruction, watched some videos, and then decided to deal with this really sticky tape that they have on here. I don't think anybody would be opposed if they didn't use that tape in the future. It's really kind of hard to get off. I'm using Acrosol and lots of paper towels and I only got one, one side off. So project starts on the fun side. I'll be honest, are those not the cleanest cowls you've ever seen? Look at that. Sparkly white and ready to be marked up. I took the ruler, basically just measured a bunch of one inch, uh, sorry, a bunch of markings one inch in. And I happen to have a ring that lines up perfectly with that. I think that's 12 and a quarter across and this is uh, tw uh, 10 and a quarter. So minus an inch on either side. So I'm going to use that as a template and I marked it with the magic marker. And That worked out pretty good. I had the vacuum cleaner going to suck up the itchy dust, but I changed the blade. <laughs> it's amazing, just that little cut pretty much wore out that blade. So next, I think it's uh, time to kind of finagle it on here and see where it is. But I gotta put these uh, uh, rivets in first. I have to dig back into the old manual to see what rivets actually go here. So I'm gonna do that now. So many moons ago, I left myself a little note there to put the stiffener behind the tab. It's a little easier to see on this side. Um, and the reason I did that, I may have talked about this before, but um, so this stiffener is supposed to, I think, go in front of that tab, but that adds enough spacing to put a little gap here. So I'm actually gonna put the last bit behind the tab just so this sits tight on that. And then uh, I'm also inclined to put one more rivet here. I know that it obviously doesn't call for it. And this, you know, it ends up behind that brace there, but I think it'll keep this from wanting to bow out. I do have it edge formed on here, so it does, does sit pretty tight. But I noticed even with the Clicos in that, you know, you can get your fingernail under there. I think for aesthetics and consistency, I'm going to put a rivet there. Deviating from the plans again. Here's a perfect example why everything always takes longer than planned. It's kind of like a domino effect. All I want to do is put the cowl on. I realize the Clicos are in the way. So all I want to do is put the rivets in and I realized that, what did I realize? I uh, had to look up what rivets they are, which led to me putting another rivet hole here, which led to me, okay, might as well glue these things in while I got it, which led to me realizing that this upper boot cowl skin overlaps like right to the edge of this rivet, but the head for that rivet would kind of interfere with that, which leads to, okay, how can I take an eighth of an inch off of this? Since these are spaced up almost three quarters of an inch, I'd already edge form this. Um, but I think taking an eighth of an inch off and they're symmetrical on both sides will clear this rivet nicely. And uh, the way I did that is basically just glued it with double-sided template tape onto this piece of wood. And now I'm gonna run it through the table saw. Hopefully I don't mess it up. That would, that would not be good.
That actually worked out perfect. Got a nice clean edge that's just a little bit shorter than it was, clearing that, that rivet right there. But yeah, one thing leads to another. I had these things in, they originally come with three rivets and I'm about to silicone them in and it was kind of floppy right here. So I said, all right, let me put another rivet. And then I'm like, all right, I'll put two more rivets there too. So now I have a total of five rivets. And if you're wondering why these are black, that's because I painted them black. They are white, but the black looks cool. So anyway, I added two more rivets here, two more there, and can put it all together. All right, that was beautiful. I wanted to be very careful to make sure that no silicone oozes out this way, you know, for when they paint it or whatever. But you got a good seal. You can see it just oozed out around the edge there. And I got uh, the extra rivets in there. And this, I'm glad I did this because as I was putting this rivet in, like this was not bowing out, but it was kind of gappy. So last thing I want to do is, you know, when we hit in Mach 1 or 1, 1. 1.2, whatever this thing does, to have this thing start flapping. So time to put the rest of it. Well, no section is complete without a, at least one head scratcher. That one's mine. I was all proud of myself because I actually went back and looked at the AVEX rivets that go all around, AVEX rivet everywhere unless noted otherwise. So this one's clearly noted as a um, AAPQ45, which is ginormous. So I'm like, okay, put it in and Yep, way too long. Looks too long on the inside and every other thing. Then I realized you gotta read the little asterisk, which is uh, small washers. And then the asterisk actually says, use washers as required to fill gap between tab and stiffeners. Now I don't have a gap. This fits perfect the way it is. So anyway, long story short, I'm gonna drill that one out and just use an AVEX rivet like I did on this side. And it's the same material that goes through here, so we'll be good. All right, I think uh, for now, good night. Alrighty, got that one replaced, drilled out, put it in. And like I said, it's flush up against the tab and there's no, no bowing. Get it, bowing? And uh, up next is this cowl. So kind of laid it in there just to get myself excited. And I think today's project is to cut it up. The old manual has you cut out something like this for trike only, but I did download the new, wherever it went, the new manual and it has you cut out a big arch underneath here. So unfortunately, or well, I don't, fortunately or unfortunately, I have the exhaust mounted, so I actually have to cut that before I can get anything even going. And I also will remove the airbox um, just so I don't damage it trying to get this thing to fit. And uh, I know I have it safety wired in already, but we'll call that practice. Makes perfect. So I printed out the new sheet and they want you to do 16 and a half and then 11 and a half inches up. <clears throat> the question is 11 and a half inches from the original cowl or once you trim it, I think it's gonna get trimmed quite a bit. So I was watching some videos and Steve from Clear Direct made the comment that Tony said nine inches back from here. So that ends up about here. 
the original would be here that ends up about here that's a big chunk and 16 and a half inches brings you to here i measured the center line as best as i could and the exhaust stacks on this plane are 18 inches apart so i know that as this comes down that changes a little bit so i think I'm going to cut a smaller version of this for starters and then work my way out. For starters, I cut the 16 and a half times 11 and a half in from the back, the original back. And as you can tell, there's definitely gonna be interference with the tailpipes here. So we're gonna see how we're gonna address that. Up front, we also got a little work ahead of us. Not sure how this is supposed to sit, but the inner part sits on the inside of this. I know I don't have my spacers in yet, not there yet. And this sits, well, this sits on the outside of the baffling, just on the inside. So yeah, this will be fun. All right, making some progress down here. I actually put up my old uh, template again to try and line up the exhaust, but I'm not, not worried about that right now. I did move it in a little bit and uh, I'm gonna kind of trimmed it to here. So at least now the cowl kind of sits without hitting the exhaust. I can do the fine tuning later. Now I'm gonna resume where the instructions tell you to put the tape on and you got my little spacer in here and to have a better picture of how this is supposed to go. I think. All right, the tape is on. Two pieces of uh, two inch, which isn't exactly two inch. Worth noting is that, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but this edge, I don't know if I cut it. If I did, shame on me. But anyway, it's not 100% straight. It actually bows in at the same place on, on both sides. So, If I'd have known that, I probably would have tried to flatten it out a little bit, but too late now, it's all riveted. So I trimmed this flange uh, down to the one inch, like they say, using a combination of my trusty jigsaw with a metal blade. The metal, I should have known this before I was cutting with a wood blade. The metal blade works much better on composites, um, fiberglass and stuff like that. Um, I use this for the straight lines and I use that to, you know, around these little sections here. So I'm really liking the way this is fitting. This is really nice. I know they say to trim this back one and three quarters or whatever it is. I'm kind of holding off on that until I get a better picture. I did do a small relief here just because it was kind of tight on that. And I just, I don't want to put too many spacers in there and force it into place. I want it to sit uh, naturally. But so this is really nice. Um, right here, I'm real happy. This upper edge, which is exactly one inch jog, joggle or whatever they call it, is just below the uh, threads of the engine mount bolt. And uh, it's the same on, on both, both sides, because you know how I feel about that. <laughs> and uh, what am I gonna do now? Oh yeah, so they want you to, this is my three inch line and they only want you to cut the bottom. They say, save this for later. So I'll probably cut up to here to try and get this to fit proper. I have a little discrepancy. It starts at two and a quarter on this side and then goes to like two and three eighths plus. This side is two and a quarter throughout. So I'm just gonna double check that. But before I cut it, <laughs> I know this is geeky, but I actually put a laser line. That's exactly 12 inches up from um, the original uh, cowl. So it kind of gives me a reference point in case I want to measure back. Um, not sure if that's really true or not. I cut this thing out too and this thing's like skewed. I assume that's intentional. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so double check that and cut it. Alright, got those all cut. Those are right on, so I'm happy with that. These flanges on the side, I think I cut down like was it 17 inches or something. And uh, now I'm working on the top. I might just leave it like this. It would seem like extra air for cooling would be good, right? 
In the original manual, it said to trim that back one and three quarter inches. On the revised one, it's two inches. I was just kind of holding off because I wanted to see where it all falls with my baffling and stuff like that. But uh, pretty confident that that two inches should be good. So I marked it, gonna cut it. All right, beautiful cut. Two inches, lines up pretty good. I took this joggle out underneath, that came down. And I'm actually contemplating cutting this whole thing off. It's shorter on the other side. It's only about five eighths from the bend, and this is about an inch and an eighth. So I'm gonna make that five eighths too, I believe. I know this needs to sit back a little bit. Right now, this whole cowling is just uh, hanging on there. Uh, I put a strap on here. That actually helps a lot. And I find that this is a key positioning point right here. So the other side, I'm gonna trim a little bit. I move this forward just to center it here but this is basically just sitting on here on its own so you see little red marks i'm gonna just trim this a little bit and bring this back and i keep using this as a reference point so getting there a lot of on and off very cautiously cutting just little little bit by little bit so off of this I cut two inches off of that flange basically here and I took a little bit out this way just so I could kind of overlap it on that. I know it's kind of pushed up against the spinner right now but that's got to go. That half inch is just in the way no matter which way you turn it. So I'm going to cut that off um, and uh, yeah just keep fussing with it. It's getting there. Cut that joggle off and uh, hopefully I don't regret it. <laughs> Opened up these a little bit more. Get a little bit of a gap here. This is sitting on its own, as you can see. Moving. And uh, so there you can kind of see. Shift the left and right. So we're definitely on the right track. A, I'm going to call it a day for today because now it's just down to the fine trimming. Kind of my collection of pieces that I cut out and now it's off to grinding or fitting smaller pieces. So yeah, it's been a long day, but a productive day. Cut everything done I wanted to and then some. Actually, I wasn't sure how much I was going to get done, but good night.